sometimes I'm convinced, I convince myself that like the pain is in my head. When I went into this appointment, you know, everything was as bad or worse than the doctor initially thought. And, and it took that for me seeing that and for the doctor to say like, wow, like I can't even believe you've been running. You know, this is crazy. And you know, he's a nerd, so he likes to see injured stuff, you know, and um, it took that for me to finally believe my own pain and my own symptoms. Yo. Hello, welcome to the BRAD podcast. My name is Carson, and today I will be interviewing your host, Kat. Woohoo! My husband. My <laughs> wife. <laughs> yeah. So, Kat, um, let's dive right into it. You got some crutches right there next to you, and we have been sort of managing this together, but you are currently in a state of recovery. You're recovering your body, and you want to talk a little bit about that yeah um so you know if for anyone who's been following me you know it's just been a constant state of battling injury literally my entire running career um that kind of all started in 2015 um when I was hit on my bike by a UPS truck um like a few months after being hit by a drunk driver um you know, got all of that settled. And then literally three months later was hit by this UPS truck. Literally, uh, the popped up for a minute. I don't remember this, but was start screaming at the guy like, F you, how, how dare you do this to me? And then like passed out on the road and had, you know, a concussion. Um, I had a hairline fracture in that like spine bone and my L5, um, some pretty severe, disc damage and you know that impacted the nerves down there and um I also broke my pelvis and you know you know cracked six teeth on this side on my left side um lost my hearing and on my left side and it was pretty traumatic like you know I don't really think I processed that trauma that I experienced then um until many years later you know, I was young, I was on my own, um, and, uh, you know, my family lives far away and, you know, had obligations, so couldn't come. Um, I was in the hospital for a few days solo, and and then also just broke. You know, I didn't have health insurance. I was um, working at Christie Sports, a seasonal job, while also working in a preschool to help to get my teaching license. Um and it was it was a really difficult time and um I didn't like process how serious the injury was and kind of just went right back to running um but through the next couple years I was in 2015 I started experiencing this like searing pain that I couldn't pinpoint um turns out it was nerve pain I actually didn't discover that that's what it was until 2017 right before um western states when i was like freaking out you know <laughs> I, I got into western and i trained so hard for western states and all of a sudden um and it, it this has been a pattern but i had no clue what it was and i'd been seeing pts and um but anna Mae flynn actually who i was staying with uh in the weeks leading up to western states and who's had a similar injury um, was like, oh, that is nerve pain, uh, which changed everything. It made it made me so I could address the the pain for what it was, and I wasn't just like describing symptoms to doctors and um, you know sports med doctors, PTs, like everyone. And I just like no one even. It took two years to even figure out that it was nerve pain. So shout out anime. Um, so I I that I had a few good years after that. You know, Western states. Um, I thought about not starting the days before, um, because, it, you know, I was having like what I now describe as like flare ups where, you know, it just feels like my back is being really compressed and, uh, it, you know, it's ultimately not too bad, but it, 
it really is so shitty to run through, you know, especially for a long time. And it takes like such a huge emotional toll. Um, but I, uh, I, I really worked to address the nerve pain once I knew what it was. It, it, I could address like, okay, how can I make this pain go away? How can I treat it? Um, I saw someone who recommended surgery for my back, um, but said that I was young and I could wait. Um, and then so kept, you know, seeing all these people who specialized in nerve pain. And, and honestly, the nerve pain has gotten so much better um, since 20, 2015 um, and 2017 even. Like in these last five years, it's, it's just improved a lot just because I know what it is. But, you know, that didn't fix the root of the problem. I have, even though the nerve pain's gone, um, I've had doctors describe it to me as Wi-Fi. Uh, so, like, I have, in a perfect world, the nerves in my back can, which, like, the, the nerves that I damage control hip function. Um, and in a perfect world, when everything's not inflamed and I'm not stressed, there's, like, a Wi-Fi signal. My, that nerve can send that signal for my glutes and stuff to work. Um, and so like when there's no stress and I'm doing all the PT, it's right. But you add just like, you know, you throw a t-shirt over the modem or like, you know, I can't, I travel or can't do the PT for a day or like even eat shitty food. Um, the, uh, you know, the, the Wi-Fi signal's lost. And like, when I say like, there's not function in my left side, like I can't even pick up my left leg, um, to the height I can my right. And like, my left glute was super atrophied. You know, PTs and doctors and strength coaches have used that word atrophied. Uh, my quad, my left quad was really atrophied, my hamstring. And then my calves are, were like super, super overactive, which caused like, you know, plantar, a plantar tear in 2019, all these like calf Achilles pains. Um, wow. Okay. Okay. So you dove into all of the. <laughs> Everything that's mm-hmm. been going on, yep. that is a lot of stuff to, <laughs> you know, have to deal with. And backing up, this all started in 2015 yep. when you experienced two separate accidents, right? One was from mm-hmm. a drunk driver. One was from a, a UPS truck while you're yep. riding your bike mm-hmm. that hit you. And it's it impacted your spine, which has then spread to then impact the rest of your body and that was a while ago yeah and since then you've been racing these huge races and have have made some incredible accomplishments and had some amazing performances too along the way uh with this spine and then a hip issue also yeah uh, which you broke your broke your your hip right yeah (laughs) my pelvis (laughs) your pelvis so um it's been a long time coming and you know stemming from your spine you've had to sort of push through all these other injuries that have stemmed from that right Mm -hmm. and how has that impacted your racing throughout the years yeah like like you you mentioned having to deal with a bunch of nerve pain but how has that progressed in recent years as well yeah so in i remember in 2019 i all of a sudden like if the nerve pain was i was managing it but all of a sudden I started, I, I realized that my left hip like felt weird when I was running. I describe it as like, it felt like my quad was coming off the bone when I was running. And what I le- later learned is that's just because my quad wasn't activating. And so I was just jiggling on, on my, like with my stride instead of um, contracting. And um, in 2019, I was like, huh, that's super weird that it's just not working well on it. Um, that was kind of the start of like, and like, you know, again, I said in 2019, I also tore my plantar, but like 2019 was when I really started noticing, noticing the impact on, um, some of those like major, uh, muscle groups in my hips that like really, um, power your stride. Mm -hmm. Um, so best case I was feeling, um, a lack of power in my left side, which I felt before, but. I was so fit that like I kind of just went do 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 and like up the hill and I was also like really practice at downhill running before um, because I'd have to like keep up. So anyway, it's just been like a constant battle of like since 2019 when I felt that change and 
and even before that, you know, before 2019, it was like, will I have like this nerve pain on the right. day? Like how bad will the nerve pain be? But yeah. since 2019, <clears throat> it's been like not only the nerve pain, which I like now see that nerve pain is almost a better scenario, even though it was more painful and more constant because now it's like, do I, sh- will I show up on a start line? And like, it's not just nerve pain. It's like my whole left side of my body, just not functioning. Your body it's- is trying to protect itself. That injured portion is trying to, is trying to keep that still and steady so that the rest of your body around that area can take on the load. Right? Yeah, exactly. And it's, it, it means other stuff is working that shouldn't be, and which causes all types of, you know, when you're put, you know, I could live quite a happy life without this injury bothering me if I wasn't trying to pursue a professional ultra ultra running career, which Mm -hmm. is like, you know, kind of a tough pill to swallow. Um, But, you know, when I'm pushing my body to the limits, um, it just, I, I don't have the structural integrity to withstand the distance or I didn't. Um, and hopefully I will. So things would, you know, just start falling apart and best case scenario, it just meant like I, I felt really unstable running and really awkward and weird. Um, worst case it was causing, you know, pretty extreme hip pain where I'd be limping really badly or, um, and extreme low back pain, you know, the, 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 again, like the nerve pain, I've really, it's much better, but then when I push my body, it's like my hip hurts so bad. And then I get the nerve pain and then I get like weird other pains, like in my feet, like, because I come down so much harder on my left side, like my fat pad on my foot, like starts to get really inflamed. Yeah. And so, uh, what was the procedure that you got just recently and why did you choose that one for this specific issue? So in 2021, um, after CCC, or no, it was after Javelina, um, 100K. I So I knew something was wrong after CCC from my hip that was more than just my normal back injury. Mm-hmm. Um, at CCC, like every time in 2021, I like pushed a little bit. My back was just like, my back and my hip, it was just so painful. Um, and luckily then I could take ibuprofen. Um, now it's, it's not allowed in the race anymore. It's, um, it's a banned substance, but, but we recently learned ibuprofen while you're racing an ultra is not good for you. We'll get to that. (laughs) (laughs) So, So, um, we, uh, so then I got an MRI after Javelina and after Javelina, I was like, you know, Javelina, I won the race, but man, it was uncomfortable. My hip was just not working. I felt so stiff. Um, I, I just like. I felt like my upper body was moving to try and move my lower body and my hip. So it was, you know, and so I was like, "Ah, I'm going to get an MRI. I did. They said I had a 40% torn labrum as well as like my disc damage was getting worse, you know, my herniated disc and stuff. And, you know, they use scary words like deteriorating and Mm -hmm. blah, blah. Um, So I was like, okay. I'm going to have one good, one more good season for the season of 2022. And then I'm going to, you know, I had a terrible 2021 season, so I'm going to get this fixed. Um, And at first I thought the only option was surgery. Um, And through some exploring uh, and, you know, surgery, it's like it takes or it doesn't, you know, (laughs) maybe it'll help, maybe it won't. Um, And I was going to have to get two different procedures, you know, a repair of the labrum and also possibly a disc replacement and if not they were just gonna do something to one of the nerves um in my back to make it like one of them that to stop working which is like kind of a scary thing to think about um and then you know after talking to some specialists i discovered stem cells so then starting last year you know at first we we're gonna we we're talking surgery then last summer uh summer of 2022 when it was still really bad and it was getting more and more apparent that um, I might, you know, still underperform in 2022, even doing everything right, even doing tons of PT, really dedicating myself to taking care of my body, um, that it might not be enough. And so Carson and I started really, you and I really start exploring stem cells. And Mm -hmm. you were a big part of me, a part, you know, a huge part of the reason that like, 
made me do the research and you did a lot of the research yourself because you'd see me and some days I just like wouldn't be able to walk, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it was excruciating for me. Actually. <laughs> and you ha- you were resistant to sitting down and healing for a long time. Yeah. And you had a really hard time sort of taking your own advice because you are a coach and you instruct your athletes when it's time to sit down and recover um, and, you know, let your body heal from these massive efforts. And you knowing that you had this injury, it, it took a long time for you to to come to terms with that. And why, why was that? Um, you know, again, like I just went back and was like, after one more big performance, mm-hmm. I'll deserve to fix the hip. And this opportunity to run as a pro athlete um, is something I value. And I know that it's, an opportunity of a lifetime that not everyone gets. I hold it near and dear, and I I really try my best to represent the brands that I work with well, and I want to make them proud. And, you know, so it's, it's tough to, like, go out on a note, like, of, oh, shit, I've had, like, eight bad races in a row and a pandemic. And I've just been injured for five years, you know, sorry, I'm going to take six weeks off (laughs) um, of running and training and it's going to mess my season up. Like, that's hard. I just wanted one more race before I brought it up to them and one more, one more great performance. And, um, but it was never enough. And like, you know, that, you know, through these training blocks, once it became like less about the muscle damage, so what, or less about just the nerve pain. So what happened was I started having the, the labral tear was because of the nerve pain or because of my back injury, you know, stuff. It wasn't, uh, my muscles weren't activating correctly, which put more stress on my hip, which caused the labral tear, which caused, I learned later a a glute med tear. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's just this cycle of needing one more race to before I can bow out for a little while. But then through the training block for that next race and through the race, it just gets worse and worse because you're really pushing yourself through something you shouldn't. And then um, then you, it, I was in a cycle of underperformance and every race I lined up at, the hip got worse, you know, which is, you know, now... I'm like, no shit, Sherlock, but. (laughs) (laughs) Right, yeah, I mean, I am literally here helping you with these races and each time seeing you, your body start to fail and struggle because of these injuries you've sustained and then you beat your head against a wall and just go through so much, not only physical, but emotional pain while you underperform. And then you go hit the grindstone again, like, two weeks later and you're like, all right, the next one, next one. And yeah. you weren't, you didn't have a healthy base, a physiologically strong base to build from. And like yeah. your musculoskeletal system was failing because of these injuries. And so now we're in this stage of recovery and, um, you know, it, it was hard, it was hard for you to accept it, but now you're in it. Now you're doing it. And I feel very strongly like you're going to come back from this and have such a solid foundation to build from that your new ceiling after recovering from this procedure is going to be through the roof beyond your wildest dreams i mean before that initial accident that caused all of these issues physically for you um you know that was 2015 that was before any of your note your hugest noteworthy performances that have like launched your ultra running career. Yeah. So now do you feel like you've learned anything moving forward and like, how will you approach this? How, how do you approach this recovery process and what have been the difficult parts and the positive parts? Yeah. Um, so I first want to talk about, you know, the, the treatment itself and, you know, something that I recognize in myself might be um, not always super healthy. And one of the reasons it took me so long to get this treatment done and to finally listen to you um, 
was that sometimes I'm convinced I convince myself that like the pain is in my head and that I'm making it up to get out of the race and I'm making it up to get out of the training. And um, so when I went into this appointment, I and like, you know, everything was as bad or worse than the doctor initially thought. Um, plus, I had a, a tear in my glute meat attachment that had created like a hole in my bone the size of my thumb from pulling off the bone. Um, so there's like, he showed it to me, there's like a, like a hole in my bone from um, the glute me just pulling off the size of like the top of my thumb. And, uh, um, and you know, it was super calcified and, uh, you know, or the like t- the tendon in there was starting to calcify, so turn into bone and um, what you had to break up with the needle. And so, and, and it took that for me seeing that and for the doctor to say like, wow, like I can't even believe you've been running, you know, this is crazy. And, you know, he's a nerd, so he likes to see injured stuff, you know, and um, it took that for me to finally believe my own pain and my own symptoms. Um, And that's something that I I know I've struggled with for a long time. Um, But, you know, that realization that like, wow, I put this off because I thought there was a chance that I was just making it up, even with an MRI. Mm-hmm. That showed a t- torn labrum. Like, oh, labrums, everyone has a torn labrum. Like, you can fix it with PT, you know. Um, and even with, a, like, multiple people seeing my, my back injury and being like, oh, that's going to need fixed one day, you know. Even with that, I was still like, ah, I'm just like, it's not that bad, though. You know, all this stuff could be fixed with PT and body work. Um, so I was, I was not trusting my own body. Um, and instead convincing myself that like it wasn't a big deal. And that, you know, that's a something that's gonna be hard for me to unlearn. Um, and even now I like, with my, you know, as I'm recovering, I'm like, is it that bad? Like, and I had a friend who's a doctor of PT and she was like, cat, if you feel it, that that's as good as pain. Like, because I was, you know, putting a tiny bit of weight on it to stabilize myself. And she's like, if you're non-weight bearing, you need to take your foot away. Um, And she was explaining to me, I was like, it doesn't hurt though. The doctor said, let pain be the guide. (laughs) This is after the procedure. This is after, yeah. 10 days ago. And she was like, no, if you feel it, that's as good as pain. Mm -hmm. So just learning that too, um, and kind of learning to listen to my body a little bit better um, and, and trust my body. You know, the listening is one thing, the trusting is the next thing and not, talking yourself out of it um you're an expert at that (laughs) i know i am i am it's like really wild (laughs) you're in the 80 mile 80 of a grueling ultra and then you just tell yourself that it's not really that bad and you push through it and then it's fine and honestly like mile 80 to 100 is my favorite time during 100 mile races you know Mm -hmm. So that's a great strategy for winning an ultra, but it's not a great strategy for living a long and healthy and prosperous life, (laughs) right? So as your husband, I need to, you know, really make that a priority for both of us to make sure that our happiness is sustainable and all these fun adventures can go long into the future, right? Yeah. Beyond any sort of like records or, or professional running careers, like we... I, th- this is personal for me now, right? I know like, you're invested, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, and that you know, and that's ultimately why I, I may have never made the decision to get treated by myself. Um, but you, you know, you watching me go through this was as good at st- as staring in a mirror, you know, because you would see me like train be, you know, be hopeful, be like, oh my God, like it's not hurting this week. It's not hurting this week. You know, it's, I'm doing so great. It's just what I thought. And then all of a sudden, as I got like through peak training or like travel to the race, I I would like not be able to walk for like a day. It would just be so bad. Um, and I'd be like, it's fine. Like I just need to roll. (laughs) And, um, A, a week before getting stem cells, you were, you know, the recovery for stem cells from this these stem cell injections is going to be six weeks before you can do light jogging again. Yeah. And that that was excruciating for you leading up to that procedure because 
you would go on a little run or a little jog and you'd say, ah, it doesn't hurt right now. What the heck? What am I doing? Yeah. And it's so easy to convince yourself that all those previous moments of pain were fabricated in your own head, but they weren't. And so that was... That was hard. That was hard. It was hard for you to to realize that it's real and to sit down and really take that time to heal properly. Yeah, because then it's a choice. You know, other injuries. You know, you you push yourself, then you get hurt, and then you can't. You physically have to get treated before you run again. Um, but this was a choice to choose. You know, it was like between continuing this pattern um, and taking those six weeks, you know, knowing that I'm going to become less fit. And I was very fit for Tarawara. (laughs) You know, I was very fit and which, you know, was super hard. So, you know, it was choosing like not to build on that fitness towards the 2023 season. It was choosing to take the, this time off, even though I'm having really good runs, you know, I was having great runs in the Mm -hmm. weeks leading up to this procedure. And that was, um, that was, that was fitness built on a base of weak structural integrity. Though. I know. Yeah. Like you were really fit going into Tarawera, but we just kind of were talking and that appeared to be a sort of rock bottom where we both realized there was no other choice. So you had to fix that base, that structural integrity for you to become fit from. And yeah. so. And you're saying that right after Tarawera was a rock bottom. Y- yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know. That was, you know, a week before our wedding, you saw me pass out at mile 85, likely, you know, caused by taking too much ibuprofen during that race, just so I could hold it together and race well, you know, and, and again, it's the Wi-Fi signal. If everything was right, maybe I, my hip would have been fine that day, but honestly, I, She's not, she's not actually a cyborg. She doesn't actually have <laughs> Wi-Fi in her body. <laughs> she is not an AI. Uh, Thanks. But <laughs> just, just a disclaimer for everyone. Yeah. But <laughs> who knows though? <laughs> yeah. But I, um, I don't know. You you've been going a little stir crazy now that you've been sitting in one place. Yeah. And recovering, and so has that been the hardest part of recovery? What has been the hardest part since you've gone through this recovery process? I thought the hardest part was taking, going to not be running, you know, running not only has been the most constant thing in my life. Um, but it's also, it holds up my day. You know, I, my, my day is planned around my runs every day for like the last, you know, two decades. Mm -hmm. But I, Um, I, so I thought taking that away was going to be the hardest part. And also it makes me a better person. Like I'm happier. I'm more confident. I'm, you know, able to interact with my friends better when I'm running. Um, just because it's, it feels good. I love it. But, you know, I, I, I love to race, but I love to run. Um, but so I thought that was going to be the hardest part, um, but the hardest part has actually been, I didn't realize like how much I would need to lean on you and lean on um, like your mom when she came to help me and and my friends when they're around, you know, even to just like sit down on the toilet, <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. that has been hard. It's hard to feel so dependent and it's hard to need help um, and it's hard to feel like a burden. You know, I think that's ultimately what it is, is, you know, I, I was on my own at a super young age and always extremely independent and to to really need to depend on someone is to you know sit down on the toilet to um get in and out of the water before my swims um to and like you know, you talk to the doctor and so you know exactly what I'm supposed to do and what I'm not supposed to do, which, you know, is a blessing and a curse. Yeah, <laughs> but you don't, you don't typically listen to the doctor advice because you're so strong <laughs> mentally. But uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm really happy that I've been able to be here for you and to help you through this and my mom and all of our friends too, you know, and that's one thing that I think is so important is that you realize that all these people want to be here for you and we want nothing more than to like help you through this process 
And you shouldn't feel guilty about that because we all want it. We all want this yeah. for you. And we want this because we, we value you as a friend. And it's not like we want your running career to succeed. Like that's not our only reason. It's just because we love you. And yeah. we'd expect you to do the same for us. Right? <laughs> I will. That's but... what friendship is. And like we, so you need help recovering. I don't want anything else but to help you with that in every way that I can. Whether it means sitting you down on the toilet, <laughs> like in a public restroom or, you know, getting off my meeting and running to the ocean where I have to help you like climb out of the water until you can get on your crutches again. So it's been really, it's been good learning to lean on each other. Right. Yeah. And you know, something that I never really realized, um, you know, it's always easier to give help than to ask for it and even to accept it. You don't some, like, I don't even have to ask you and still accepting the help. There's like a mental block for me. Um, and but like giving help is always so easy. And so I thought, you know, that like I, I, you know, I patted myself on the back because like, oh, yeah, I'm o- always open to helping my friends, to listening to my friends through hard stuff, to like being there for them, being there for you. Like, I'm good at that. But then you told me a couple months ago that like, no, like part of being a good friend was also letting your friends help you through hard times and like also leaning on people and, and you're not going to be close to someone if you don't also open that door, you know? And, and I, we were talking about that in terms of just like talking about hard things. You know, I get in the habit of not reaching out to my people when I'm going through something um, and letting them help me. And then it's also proven to be super true for this too, you know, uh, accepting that help and even being like, Carson, <laughs> I need help getting out of the shower. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's great. That's a great, that's, those are great barriers that we're breaking down, right? Yeah. And so good job. <laughs> Thank you. Good job to you. Nice job recovering and taking the initiative and doing this. Because you are doing it. You're, you are the one that is taking that initiative to heal your body and yeah, make sure that we have long and like so many adventures a long future of adventures and fun ahead of us so yeah thank you and what do some of those adventures look like now we went on a crazy one on sunday can you talk a little bit about that so i got cleared for swimming um last week and so i've been doing a lot of swimming and yesterday or sunday i was like we need to do an adventure like it's been kind of a hard week before with just me uh, just fighting help so hard and being so stubborn. And then, um, but, you know, we'd kind of broken through that and something that we love to do together is anything outside, you know, and that's something that helps us stay close and connected. And um, I was just like, Carson, do you want to go swim from boat ramps to ca- castles with me, which is, you know, over two miles Neither of us had ever swam swam two miles. The most I'd swam is a mile. Um, <laughs> I was like, sure, I've swam two miles, guaranteed. But I realized at mile and a half, I was like, I don't think I've swam two miles before. That's a far away. <laughs> and you're just pulling far. with your arms, so you're very efficient. Yeah, I nice wasn't job. allowed to kick, but it was exactly what we needed. Like the first mile was um, pretty chill. We were like mm-hmm. chit-chatting, goofing around, swimming. <laughs> and then the second mile became a survival mish. <laughs> yeah. the, the logistics alone for like getting this, uh, this point to point swim, this swim happened with, uh, so we, we have Shirley and the car mm-hmm. and, uh, the crutches. Mm-hmm. So what, what I did was I sat you down at the beginning in a chair mm-hmm. where I think that chair might still be on the beach. We yeah, need to go get that. Chair. I actually saw it, didn't see it this morning on my swim. Oh no, <laughs> we lost a chair. Um, anyways, we I sat you down in the chair at the start, um, drove Shirley to the takeout where I put your crutches mm-hmm. uh, so that we can get you out of the water and make the walk back to the car. And then I ran with Shirley back to the start and dropped her off at the house, which is right nearby, and then helped you into the water. And that's where we started this long, grueling swim, which came out to be like an hour and 40 minutes, mm-hmm. right? And 
2.3 miles. 2.3 miles. And uh, I think you're ready to become a triathlete. Yeah. All I got to do <laughs> is get back on the bike. I've, hard, I've been on the bike, uh, on a bike, like three times since I got hit by the UPS truck. And one oh. of them was when you and I biked around Lake Annecy. And remember, oh, I was man. like nervous to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah maybe just biathlon. Swimming, <laughs> swimming and running. That, you don't have to face your fears on bikes. Yet. Yeah. I don't know. I c- thought about it. I think it might be kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Cool. But. Well, thanks for explaining that recovery process to me and the world and the B Rad. What have crew. you learned through this recovery process? Oh, man. Uh, wow. I've learned a lot. You know, how to best be there for you. And knowing that you feel guilty about letting people be there for you, I need to make sure that I'm I'm there for you. But you also know for sure that I want to be there for you, and that that is, you know, where I want to be. Also, it's like I want to be there with you in the bathroom, helping you sit on the toilet. <laughs> I want to be there, helping you, you know, down the stairs and to the beach and like. You know, do do the extra chores around the house, and you know it's all give and take, right? So like, mm-hmm. it's when I was sick the other week, you were taking care of me also. So it's like, um, but making sure that you you know that that's, uh, I just I guess I've learned how to best help you in these moments of weakness or not weakness but recovery. I think it's very strong that you're recovering right now, because you're taking that upon yourself and that comes from within so great job thanks honey great job to you i honestly would still just be hitting my head against the wall like a super stubborn idiot (laughs) (laughs) if it weren't for you yeah i'd be like uh tarawara totally not a big deal i can just manage it with pt still that would be my third (laughs) year saying that i have learned that as your partner i need to I need to crack the whip sometimes. It's time for you to sit down and heal yourself. I know. And, and help you realize when it's time to do that. So. Yeah. After Tarawara, you literally told me you wouldn't go to another race until I got my head fixed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that's it. That's it. I know. You're, you need help. Honestly, <laughs> fair. Super fair. <laughs> so, great job. And looking forward to this coming season the you know seeing where what you build from there and next year it's just going to get better and better so oh, yo high so. five Woo-hoo. let's do this all right cat and carson out Woo.